And so, another year begins. I've always loved starting in Vegas. It reminds you that while this is a game, there are very real stakes. The city welcomes us, knowing that our cards have been shuffled and its chips have been stacked. Every year, the Pro Tour ups the ante, and this year will be no different. Here on tour though, it can be easy to confuse a little bit of luck with good old fashioned skill. So whether this season is a redemption arc, a return to form, or a continuation of 2022, you know these guys plan to bring the noise, the finesse, the boom sauce to 2023. But a successful season can mean different things depending on who you talk to. A first Pro Tour win, a US championship, or another world title. So who are you placing your bet on? The up and comers or the vets? The dark horse or the safe bet? Will Vegas deal us the same hand twice? Or is something new in the cards this year? Whatever happens, you know Jomez Pro will be right here to bring you the story. Both stories. Hello and welcome to the 2023 Disc Golf Pro Tour Las Vegas Challenge, the first event of the year. We start off today at the Infinite Disc Course, one of two courses we'll be playing this week. And here we are, the season is in full swing. I'm Madison Walker. I'm Erica Stinchcomb. We're just two regular ladies, you know? <laughs> We're two hot geese, y'all. We're here on Joe Mez. Hong, <laughs> thanks to Joe Mez for having us. I'm not sure if they wanted us or if you guys just bullied them into it, but yeah. either way, We're it stoked. is time. Enough about us. We are at Wild Horse Golf Club at the Infinite Discourse, as Madison said. It's a par 60, uh, established in 2016. It's a PGA tour stop from the 70s. Can you guys imagine Vegas in the 70s? Mm -hmm. The Sahara Invitational. Now it's a disc golf course, though. Yeah. Uh, the, big, the best scoring separator on the course was hole nine. It is the newly designed hole nine. You'll see why as we play this front nine. Thanks to Udis for those stats, and we will be using them for the rest of the coverage and throughout the season. On our feature card today, we have Katrina Allen. She won this last year by one stroke, came down to the last hole. She got second in 2021 and 2019. Um, world ranking of second, two-time world champ. Enough said about her. <laughs> yeah, we can go on and on. <laughs> so excited to have Evelina Salonen over from Europe. She got second at Las Vegas Challenge in 2022. Her current world ranking is seventh, and you guys know her as one of the biggest arms on tour. Always a delight to watch her little smile and giggle just Sets my heart ablaze. Yep, Paige Chu <laughs> won it in 2019 over Katrina Allen. This is her first year back on tour and she's a mom now, folks. Um, so excited to have her on Team Discraft all year long. And Hannah Blomroos, uh, last year tied for 25th, but in 2020, she got third right behind Evelina, world ranking of third, also a huge bomber. Gonna be a, just a delight to watch. It was super windy on the course today, projected all week long. We started hole one with a nice little shorty at 233 feet, over out of bounds the whole way, but nothing deep you have to worry about. A lot of mid ranges, maybe some putters off the tee. I think we had a right to left crosswind. The wind was probably a sustained 18 to 20 with a little bit higher gusts. And Madison and I both played early and the wind was ch ever changing. For me, it was a pretty straight tailwind when I came through. So we'll just have to see how the disc reacts. 
Katrina's throwing her SP breaker. Buzzing the basket, going out into circle two with a death putt comeback towards out of bounds. Kind of the safe play in the wind. You don't want to leave it short and then be putting for hazard for to try to save your par. Just listen to that wind. Evelina throwing an AVR X3, but not quite making it. Yeah, Heisering out just a little early. <laughs> Still smiling, though. Paige Shu. If you didn't watch the 2019 Las Vegas championship from GK Pro, she uh, won in a playoff. It was super cool. Just you know, pause, go watch that, and come back. Great to see her on tour. She does have a full tour card this year and will be out at a ton of events. And that was a good line, but it catches that last little dead tree and looks like it lands in the hazard. Everyone knows about hole one jitters, but can you imagine the first hole of the year type of jitters, <laughs> especially <laughs> in this type of conditions? Played as the eighth most difficult hole with only 7% of the field birdieing. That's only four. Oh, wow. Henna also throwing a star AVR X3. It lands in a really similar spot to Evelina. Or, uh, excuse me, to Katrina. Page putting from the hazard and just laying up. Yeah. Might as well just take the stroke, try not to make it too, move on. The hazard comes in very close, so Henna also just gonna lay up. In typical golf course fashion, there are no trees or really many bushes or anything blocking any green. So we were gonna see a lot of uh, horizontal f uh, flags on top of the baskets all day. Every putt is a nervy putt, that is for sure. So all this little round of tap-ins is exactly what you want. And this will be, I believe, the shortest hole of the day. There's one other that's maybe close, but yeah, one of the few under 300. Hole two is a par three, it's 333 feet. Uh, you are teeing from, you know, basically over some hazard. You just want to rip it out here and try to avoid the OB on the right side. The basket is just over the crest of this hill. If you can land something um, at the hill and kind of skip up to get a putt, that's the ideal play. It plays a bit harder than 333, I think, in the wind. When I came through, it was a left to right, um, so it kind of held the disc out towards that out of bounds. Uh, you see a lot of people take this right side and just kind of throw something flat that hyzers at the end. I have seen some people do like an anhyzer on the left side of that tree, um, which to me is just crazy. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, I played with Leah Senegeni today. She went in the lefty gap. Yeah, she's left-handed. Mm -hmm. Paige Shu, we might see throw the right-hand gap in our practice round. She attacked that way and got pin high. Yeah, it's doable for sure. Katrina looked like she got... Most of the way there, not sure where it landed. And a really high. Yeah, taken to the sky, not scared of the wind, and she gets it right up on top of the hill where Erica said was a good spot. Um, there's a few bushes there you have to contend with, with on the green, and then that basket is actually on the side hill, so you gotta get it in the basket or you could roll. Here's a destroyer from Evelina as well. Smoked. And that's pretty much what you were trying to trying to do just land near that hill and skip up you do have to get i feel like just a bit lucky to miss one of these little bushes it's very difficult to air it out all the way pin high with that hill in the way yeah there's oh Paige there it is the left gap. nice she kept it really low not sure if the wind carried it as much as she wanted there is one big palm bush that you want to avoid on the short side of the hill let's see where she landed it's so crazy seeing Paige throwing <laughs> different stuff. She's been throwing Dee since she was, what, 12? Yes. <laughs> so that was an ESP surge from her. Hannah just lays up, makes sure it stays. She was dropping bombs in the practice round, so excited to see her maybe hang with Hannah and Evelina today and Katrina. Hannah tickling the basket. Hopefully it laid down. Paige from... Not quite 40 feet, 
Sketchy putt, though. It's downhill if she misses, it could leave a long comebacker, so she just lays up. Katrina with a birdie look. Wow, she got way down there. That's awesome. Leaves it a bit low. Looks a little disappointed. There were no birdies on the day on hole two. It played as the 10th most difficult hole because it was kind of tough to bogey, um, but no birdies on the day from FPO. With the wind, that is not that surprising to me. Yeah, it's a bummer too. We had beautiful practice days. <laughs> now it's chilly and windy. Tail as old as time, huh? <laughs> Las Vegas classic scenario. Mm-hmm. Hole three. This to me is one of the hardest tee shots on the course. It's a little bit of a narrow tunnel. You don't, you can't finish left because there's an out of bounds sidewalk that goes all the way down the left hand side. So you don't want any hyzer or flare skip. You also don't want to turn it over early because if you get in that tree line on the right hand side, it's really tough to recover. Where drives land next to that tee surface is a lot of gravel. Um, so your second shot to the basket is really tough because it's hard to get footing where you're not slipping around. You'll guys see these ladies struggle with that on their second shot. I believe last year they moved this tee pad. It was further right. And moving it to the left like this did make it a little bit tough because of where the cart path kind of comes in on the left. It's easy to hyzer out. And you see a lot of people accidentally turn it over into those trees into the right. And there's Katrina over that out-of-bounds cart mm -hmm. path that we're talking about with that big flare skip. We also had a right-to-left tailwind, so it wanted your disc to hyzer out or to get pushed to the left. Mm -hmm. So she'll have to go from that drop zone. It is doable to save your par from there. Kind of flipping her disc over really nicely and gets huge distance in the tailwind. She made it over she, the gravel. Yeah, that should hopefully be a pretty easy upshot for her birdie. That's got to be every bit of 400 feet. Yeah. Right? To get over the gravel. I think it's so. It's got to be more than that. It's crazy. Evelina trusting that disc, putting it up high in the sky. Just needs to beat these last trees here. And she does. Wow. My Who got farther? Is, <laughs> my mind is blown. Looks like Evelina might take the cake here. Um... The, the getting over the gravel makes this hole so much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of, you know, kind of what average distance throwers are going to land somewhere near that drop zone, and it kind of just splits the hole in half. Looks like Paige goes out of bounds as well, and we'll have to go to the drop zone. Yeah, it's about 320 to that little green area. If you can land there, that is the best case scenario, unless you can drive over the top of it. Katrina will go to the drop zone on that teeing area. From here, I want to say it's about 400 feet to the back. I think a little bit closer. Oh, gets in the bullseye. Oh, sorry, it's 335 feet to the yeah, basket. Yeah, that's why I was thinking it was pretty close to half. And look at that wind. Page throwing, <laughs> I know, throwing a nuke, and it does get a little bit of an unfortunate roll, and that'll be a slightly obstructed putt for her. So the only change, interestingly, from last year to this year is they call it a par five last year, and they must have gotten too many eagles because now it's a par four. Yeah, and then they moved the tee pad back too. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, no more eagles for you guys. Evelina leaving herself definitely a tester putt. I'm. I would say in this kind of a wind, even a 20 footer feels tough, you know, and Evelyn is probably 28. Henna, I think probably outside. Oh yeah. Well, outside the circle 45, maybe. So with Behind the change, a tree, yeah. with the changes and in these uh, harsh conditions, there were only five birdies on the day. Hmm. This is usually an easy birdie. A pretty easy birdie. Distance-wise, it's 675. It's not that far for, you know, two-shot birdie. Here's Evelina for her birdie attempt. Misses, but stays close. Stays smiling. Page from a knee behind the tree. Leaves it low. One thing to note today, um, I think this will be the only day that it's an issue, are the little red uh, tassels. Are farther. Yeah, normally they oh, are no. on the bullseye, which is at 12 feet, but this weekend they're on at 15 feet. I don't, I'm not sure if it's a tournament error. Or if that, I think it will be changed tomorrow. Um, but just to note today that it is 15 versus the normal 12. So Paige and Katrina both out of bounds, unable to save the par from the drop zone. Mm 
looking like pars for Henna and Evelina. This looks perfect. Off the basket. Now it's rolling. It's headed for the OB. This needs to sit. Oh my goodness. It's safe. Right on the line. She's going to have about a 30 foot putt for the win. Okay, here we go. The putt is up. Boom, it's in. Strong side with authority. What an incredible moment. Yes. Hole four is a par three, 381 feet downhill. You are teeing from out of bounds. There's an out of bounds green on the left here. Then the cart path you can see starts to wrap uh, pretty close to this elevated pin on the right side. Um, when we came, when I came through anyway, it's kind of a right to left tailwind. So you kind of want to hang it out to the right and then let it finish um, at th 381 or whatever I said the number was that I already forgot. Uh, it's very reachable because it's downhill. Anyone in the field can get it. That looks like a great line from Henna. Oh yeah, and that needs to slow down just a little bit and that is fine. It Destroyer is an, to just outside the circle, great shot. It is an elevated basket, but because it's kind of down in a bowl, it doesn't feel as hard as a lot of elevated baskets. Mm. Um, That's true. I do like the change here because I think this hole would be way too easy without it. <laughs> I wonder if Henna and Evelina are gonna throw the same disc every time they both threw <laughs> Destroyers. Are we four for Besties. four now? Besties, <laughs> yeah. Actually, <laughs> I think so. Katrina just throwing a nice, gentle, super smooth hyzer. And she'll land in circle one, CTP so far. Test her though. The wind doesn't look quite as bad at the moment. It is a little- But maybe it's just because everything's kind of dead and dry. <laughs> yeah. It's a little blocked on this side of the course. Once you get down by the basket, up on the tee pad, you can feel it, but it doesn't affect your disc as much. Paige saws one off definitely earlier than she wanted. She was reaching this in practice, but she'll have a pretty straightforward up and down from here. That's the mistake to make. You're not really bringing any kind of out of bounds into play. And she lays it up into the false bullseye. Probably gonna be some incorrect <laughs> U-disc stats. smile. Henna for birdie. Oh, wow. What a confident bid and yeah. landing it on top of the basket. I swear that's harder than making it. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina from about 27 feet with a, just a dagger of a putt. Yep. Dead center on the pole. There was only five birdies today. Katrina was one of them on our feature card. Nice little high catch on the basket. Paige will secure her par. Evelina left side. Gonna settle for another bogey here. It's a bummer to see the putting struggles coming back from last year. As, uh, Evelina just kind of always struggles with the putting. Like yeah. I can't wait until she just figures it out. And it will come. It, you know, consistently, like she's gonna be unstoppable. Yeah, hole five, uh, 378 feet. There is a turnover gap that most people take because there's some out of bounds on the right hand side and it's such a sawed off hyzer that it's really difficult to carry the full 378 feet if you take that route. So we'll see some turnovers, some um, uh, force over hyzer -y type shots. And there is a bunker deep of the basket that is out of bounds and one tree just before the basket that you want to try to avoid for your putt. This, I would, I don't want to quite say it's a bonus birdie, but it's no, not it one sure that not. you're necessarily counting on. It's a tricky line. I think the hyzer gap has kind of grown in over the years too. Um, and it's harder to get with that kind of a, a release. Most people are going to take the left side gap. Yeah, there was a headwind today too. And it's so hard to get your disc to just push forward um, on the, he the winds that we're seeing on this course today. <laughs> Look at it, play with the disc too, just elevator up and down. And Henna, one of the biggest arms in the game, just not even getting the circle two because of the wind. 
Paige with that super low linear shot, turns it over, waiting for it to come back. And I think it checks up just before the out of bounds yeah. on the right hand side. Yeah, she looks safe. Kind of tricky from over there though. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sets up for more of a forehand. And Evelina with some great power on this. It just looks like a little bit overturned and the cart path it, it comes up fast on that side, but I think she checked up. Yeah, she's gonna have to deal with some trees on her approach. It can make it very tricky. Paige able to go to a knee, throw a little floaty Anheuser into the bullseye. So pretty. The real bullseye. <laughs> Great up. I feel like our feature card ladies are, are kind of dialing it in now, you know? Katrina with the classic Las Vegas approach, really low, just kind of sliding it up to the basket using that fast golf grass. Yeah, there's not too many places on tour where you change your entire approach <laughs> game. Mm -hmm. Evelina oh, sneaking out, but getting Ooh. caught in the wind. Yeah, kind of just floated a little bit too long. She's outside the circle for her par. And from just outside circle two, <gasps> gives it a run and stays close. Love that little like throw slash bid. I feel like that's also classic Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Evelina, four par, floating it over the top of the basket. I do like the confidence, um, but that wind is doing no favors. Yes, nice bogey save. Yeah, three over though, through five. Bit of a rough start. Um, par is going to be an excellent score today. You know, a few I'm sh people I'm sure will get under par, but... This is the most scorable of the two courses we Definitely. play. Innova is the most challenging course of the three on the property. Um, some holes were changed, so there were some more birdie opportunities for FPO on this layout, but it is playing tough in the wind. There was only one birdie on this hole. Big ups to Maria Oliva. Yeah. She's my hero. <laughs> too. Ugh. <laughs> yep, that's <laughs> usually what you say when you come up to this triple island hole. Infamous 285 foot par four never gets less funny. Uh, <laughs> most people are gonna pitch up to the second very narrow island there and then try to go for the birdie. Um, there are two drop zones, so if you you know go out of bounds on your first shot, you have to go to the drop zone on the first island. If you go out of bounds on your second shot, second island, and then you have to land on the third island um, safely or you have to just keep going from that second drop zone. I think Katrina snuck on that corner. Yeah, look how proud safe. she is of that shot. <laughs> it's the worst feeling to me to come up to this and be like, yeah, I'm just gonna throw 60 feet to the first island. It's absolutely like, bizarre. I refuse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, nice it's not even a jump putt. Oh, henna out of bounds. It's not even a jump putt to the first island, but you'll see, see people do it. In the wind, yeah. yeah. It's also funny how in practice it's never windy and then we get here and it's like the yeah. most brutal wind. Oh. And this was a head wind. You can see it just takes Paige's disc and turns it, never had a chance. But if you throw something too stable, it'll skip off that skinny little second island. Evelina. Is she going for it? It sure looks like it. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Okay, slow disc, just throwing hard. Um, the first drop zone, you could see it just in front of the tee pad um, at the far side of that first island. It is 75 feet from the pin, and it is the scariest 75 feet in the world. To the pin from there or to the next island? It's farther than that. <laughs> Hey, or, if you are new to uh, the Two Hot Geese, you should know that geese do not do math. So, <laughs> I mean, everyone knows that. Good luck following along. If you ever meet a bird that is good at math, please let us know. We'd like to meet them. Page OB again. Going to have to go to the next drop zone. Evelina uh, squeaks out too. This is brutal. This is just the story of this hole. Like you watch this over and over mm -hmm. again, people being out of bounds by one inch. And it's so easy in practice. Sometimes you see people go for it in practice and, you know, get the eagle. And it's like, maybe I'll do that in the tournament. <laughs> uh-uh. Katrina with a forehand approach oh, and puts perfect. it inside the bullseye. Also, I think it's in my imagination, but I think the second island keeps getting slightly skinnier. <laughs> and they, they're saying there's no change, but it's like a, a couple of feet every year. I agree. <laughs> nice, confident up from Henna. 
Paige already two OB strokes really needs to land this safe, and she does. Evelina with a little jumper Ooh. that okay. Ooh. bites. These golf greens are faster than ever, I swear. <laughs> Katrina clinks around in the chains, but stays. Gets to one under for the round. This played as the most difficult hole of the day. Wow. 21% of the field birdieing, which is higher than I think any hole we've seen so far. Definitely. But 70% with a bogey or worse yeah. on this hole. Yeah, Ugh. if you miss your first shot, it's an automatic bogey. And the double's not that hard to find. Is this hole Evelina legendary or is it terrible? <laughs> Can it, is it mutually exclusive? Or? <laughs> yeah. Can it be both? Page also with the double. And let's leave now. Yeah, let's put it behind us. Mm -hmm. Let, let's check in with everybody else. With that birdie, Katrina putting herself in a tie for first. With Rebecca Cox and Holly Finley both under par, uh, we got Stacey Rawlsley, Maria Oliva um, even at par. even par, and everyone else over par. Yep, at least a couple, it looks like. So Erica called it with uh, even par being a great score. A great score for the day. We'll see what happens as we wrap up the back nine. Hole seven, 358 feet downhill, but it is one that everyone can reach. There is an out-of-bounds cart path just beyond the basket, so you don't want to go too far. We had a right-to-left crosswind that definitely carried the disc to the left if you show too much of the underside of the disc. So you want to keep this low, level, and straight for as long as you can with just a little hyzer fade at the end on this sloped green. Yeah, two biggest or most common errors anyway, are throwing it too straight and going out of bounds over the cart path or just getting it on a hyzer angle and then skipping way left. So you can see that tree branch in front of Katrina. It is lower than ever. It is. <laughs> it's so... Like, if you're forced, tall, I feel like it's right in the way. <laughs> yeah, it forces you to definitely throw the nose angle down, which is good, but mm -hmm. also it can make your brain get a little messed up and you like kind of try to loop one underneath it. it like I, I've mm -hmm. never seen so many people that don't throw floaty shots, throw accidental floaty shots on this tee. Right. Hannah throwing a champion rock three. I think she's in circle two. It's kind of hard to tell. Paige going an ESP force. And yeah, it doesn't quite get that flat enough. That hyzer angle catches the wind and is probably in circle two land as well. Evelina looking to pick up a birdie here after struggling on the first few holes. Rock X3 as well. Do you think when they practice, they're like, what are we throwing on this hole? <laughs> and then they try to talk each other out of whatever, right. if it's different. <laughs> Just a little pitch up for Hina. These tree branches are so low. Yeah, I feel like getting there is half the battle and then the rest is just getting lucky with an open putt to the basket. Paige? Really floats this one. I think it checks up really close. Really trusting that approach mm -hmm. disc. It's scary. Layup? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, smart. You really have to focus on those, though. There's like pine cones on the green, too, that will pick your kick your disc up. And look how close the out-of-bounds is at the bottom of the hill. Nine percent of the field out of the 57 competitors getting birdies. That was only five on the day. And this is like one of the easiest holes, in my opinion, on the course. It is. I'm looking forward to playing this a second time. Um, if you've paid attention in years past, typically we play three courses, but we are playing this one twice, which is the most scorable, I think, of the three courses. So I think everybody is looking forward to another chance to attack. Hole eight is a birdieable par five. It's only 735 feet. You are just trying to throw kind of a technical first shot through the gap and um, make sure you stay in balance. Don't find that car path on the left. Second shot is decision time. Do you go all the way to the green as this graphic shows and go for the eagle or do you lay up short of the golf green and the water and then pitch up for what should be an easy birdie? Um, par on this one is not the best feeling. You want this one. Yeah, the basket is pretty precariously placed too between the out-of-bounds green and an out-of-bounds like bog, <laughs> marsh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's very easy for your disc to roll past that out-of-bounds line into the tall grass and you'll never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina smashes that pro line swirl torrent. That was an excellent shot. 
the wind was awesome for this hole. It allowed you to get some really big distance as long as you make it under that initial tree branch. That see Henna kind of flirt with. Can you guess what Henna, Le- Henna Lena, how do you combine their names into a celebrity <laughs> name? Are throwing? <laughs> Destroyer. Yeah. <laughs> celebrity name. That was a good shot. It's okay to hug the corner uh, on this hole and try to get aggressive left. As long as you don't go get too much flare skip, mm-hmm. there's plenty of space to there's work quite with over a bit. there. You really have to saw one off. And Paige looking like Nuke is going to be one of her go-to drivers. Um, not uh, it'll be interesting to see you know what changes in the calm conditions. It's just fun to see people throw new stuff. God, Evelina just smushed that. And that's also a star destroyer. A little turned over, doesn't quite get the wind favor. Kind of a weird spot on a side hill footing wise. It'll be interesting to see if she goes for it. What do you think? Hannah going for it? Oh, I don't think so. That angle's weird. Oh, I'm wrong. (laughs) Another play here Uh that we did not mention is exactly what Hannah just did. You can kind of just crush one over Mm -hmm. the green and let it kind of slide off either the deep where Hannah is or to the left and then pitch across on your next shot. Short and right are dangerous, but yeah, like Madison said, deep and left, plenty of room. Evelina? Same as Hannah. Yep. Going for it, but erroring to the left. God, you have to get so far to be able to throw that shot that far. Well, I feel like you don't usually see people attack from the right. Mm -hmm. You usually see this, and you can kind of throw a straight shot or a hyzer. Man, that's so far. So far. Her drive. Wow. Uh Uh-oh. Katrina shorts her upshot and rolls onto the green out of bounds. That'll be a pretty long putt to try to save par. How far do you think Paige is here? Mm, My guess guess might be close to 300. Okay. And look at that Great shot. shot. With an ESP vulture. Kind of getting close to the OB but stays safe. Maybe 20 feet away. And then Evelina, too strong, coming back. That looked like a great bid if she was going for it. Nice little standstill bid. Should be an easy birdie for Henna. Evelina hunting chains as well. Katrina looking like a straddle step putt to try. Well, I was trying to do math. Can she say par? I mean, birdie. Birdie. Yeah, yeah, it's for birdie. That's wild. God, look at that wind. Can go out of bounds and birdie? My mind just exploded a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Paige with birdie look. Everything's a, I mean, eagle look. Eagle look. Yeah. Everything's a tester, though, in this wind. Like, normally that's a fairly routine distance. Yeah, but 40% of the field taking a birdie or better. Um, normally we would see a much higher percentage than that. There mm-hmm. were also two eagles on the day. Haley King and Ella Hansen both getting the three noise on this kind of tweener par five, but in the conditions, legit. Paige Shu makes good on her birdie comeback putt. Oh, Evelina going to have to settle for par. But I bet she's got a smile on her face. <laughs> Henna with a nice easy birdie. And Katrina gonna tap in her par as well. And the final hole of the front nine, hole nine, newly designed. We used to have a tee pad back into the left. It was a par four. Now we're tucked over to the right hand side. We have to throw through these kind of randomly um, assorted trees. There's a couple lines you can try to poke and hope through, or you most people will go over the top. We had a screaming headwind, sometimes right to left gusty. Um, it's 390 feet. It is technically downhill, but since you're throwing over the tops of the trees, it doesn't really play as such. Um, this one is tough to get to. I think to get there, you kind of have to throw in between the trees low and not over them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that anyone is really getting there in the wind. Oh, maybe with a little friendly tree roll. (laughs) Henna checks up. Yeah, circle's Circle's edge. edge. I feel like that's gotta be one of the closest that we'll see all day. Paige, doing what she did in practice, uh, hitting that left gap, 
Um, and she does it perfectly again, still not quite to circle two. And that just shows how strong the wind was. Mm -hmm. 390 downhill. I mean, that's one that every single person on our feature card should easily be able to reach. I don't know if I, I love the change. I didn't like where the tee pad was before, mm -hmm. but I liked this hole when it was a par four versus a par three, personally. I agree. Um, yeah, I think you already said this is probably the, the biggest change, maybe even of the weekend. Evelina going high, turned over. Oh my gosh. And as soon as that face shows, bye. Yeah. That's a weird spot. <sighs> Very weird spot to be. Hopefully she can just kind of throw something with a little bit of hyzer and skip it up. Oh no, look at this. Oh wow. She's gonna try to throw an anhyzer with a sidearm curve it around these trees land on the slope and drain. sit wow excellent great. that's such a pretty shot great angle control only two people landing in circle one off the tee here and only three more people landing in circle two <laughs> so yeah this one this one was tough to get to Paige with a nice layup for her par katrina no nonsense always good at the little touch up shots the standstills. And now with the only birdie Do it. look. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. That's to get under par on the front nine. That was sick. And that's the only birdie of the day, too. So extra yes. sick. And dead center on the pole. That's so good. Awesome. I like how they call this the biggest separator on the course. <laughs> <laughs> when there's only one birdie. Yeah, henna and everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> A league of her own. <laughs> Evelina really giving that one some juice, making sure it stays. Almost 50% of the field taking a bogey or worse on this one. So yeah, I played tough. Well, maybe we'll figure it out in the second round at the Infinite Discourse. That's, that's nine holes, folks. That's the two hockey's first nine of 2023 with Jomez. We will get better. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to be here. Um, let's check in with the leaderboard one last time. Look Rebecca Cox, two down and in the clubhouse. And only three people under par. I mean, wow. that's got to feel great. We got to watch two of them so far in the front nine. Um, we got a new name. There's so many, There's so new, many new people, people out here. here. Yeah. It's so cool. Every time I see a face I don't recognize, I'm like, yay, another one. Um, look at Erica. We got a hot goose in the top Honk. 10. Um, I feel like I had a tie for ninth. Some stuff I wanted to say, but I don't really <laughs> remember. I feel like I had some notes. Huh, wonder where they are. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Well, in the meantime, it's so cool to have so many women out here playing. Um, and we're so excited to reach all the new people at Jomez that hang out on the men's production all the time. So thank you guys for having us. Thanks to Jomez. Thanks to the Pro Tour. We're super excited. Thanks again to Udis. We love you guys' stats. We got nine more holes. Oh, yeah. Come hang out with us. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs>